Tanika. Hi, Sue. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. You're from Massachusetts? Yeah, uh, I'm in New Hampshire, actually. Right oh. outside, but I'm about 30 minutes from Boston, so. Oh, nice. How are you? Good, good. Good. Nice day today. It is beautiful today. Where are you? Connecticut. Oh. Not too far. No. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Just waiting for Zoom here to oh. start working. So you're going to broadcast this to Facebook Live, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it opened up my explorer, but that's about as far as it went. All right, let's try that again. How's business been? Oh, uh, it's been going well. Um, tomorrow I have four uh, consultation calls. Awesome. <laughs> uh, some are three of them were back to back. <laughs> Oh yeah. I know sometimes I'll get to the end of the day and be like, what else do I have to do? You know, <laughs> like, keep pushing, keep pushing. Oh. Yeah. Finally it's coming some uh, consultations. So. Yeah. Come on. Are you in 2K as well? Am I what? In the Stacey Bayman program? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, okay. I know Misty is, uh, there's a lot of women <laughs> from there. Oh, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, share in group. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Just typing in stuff now. <laughs> How long have you been coaching? Um, I added coaching to my services about a year and a half ago. Oh. So I was, well, okay. I still am uh, a brand photographer. Oh, that's a that's a hot niche. Yeah, it's, it's in demand because now um, all the coaches realize <laughs> the power of branding and yes, you know photos. Yeah, so I started with that, and then I was answering my clients' questions and pretty much kind of coaching them. Mm, yeah. Anyways, so I'm like, yeah. I can reach more people if I go online with coaching. So that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, let's spell it right. All right, here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Just check my phone, make sure we're all right. I think we're live. Yeah. Hi, Sue. Hi, Denisa. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Yourself? Good. I'm great. Great. So here we are, everyone. It is Thursday. Time for coffee and conversations, and we're joined by Sue Maisano, who is a. Uh, tell us what exactly what you do, Sue. Okay, I have two sides of businesses. One is spiritual life coaching, one is online business and mindset coaching. So, um, here you go. Beautiful. So, today we're going to talk about money mindset. 
I think that uh, I know for me, when I first started my business, sales scared the crap out of me. And it was a lot to do with how, my relationship with money. Mm. Past experiences of, you know, sales. Mm. I was like, I was like a telemarketer when I was like 18 or 19, you know, cold calling all those people that are just like hanging up on you, you know? <laughs> yeah. It got traumatized you, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. It did. It traumatized me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it gave me a limiting belief about money and sales. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of, I think a, a good buzzword right now is healing your relationship with money. Yes. Yeah. And I think some people understand what that means. And some people don't understand what that means. They're like, well, what do you mean? Like, I like money. Everybody likes money, right? Mm. It, and it, yeah, and it's not the, it's not about healing your relationship, whether you like money or not. It's about healing the relationship of receiving money, asking for money for your services or your products. And really what it comes down to is kind of it's sales and the energy. It's, it's an energy. So yeah, this, uh, you, you are spot on. It's all about energy and money is an energy. It's about your perception about yourself, how much you think you're worthy of. And a lot of us grew up uh, in a disadvantaged uh, environment or uh, growing up uh, in a poor environment. We have this uh, perception of who we are, what we are capable of, what we are worthy of. So we're constantly measuring ourselves. So when we are uh, grown up, we embark on this entrepreneurial journey. On the conscious level, we all want money. We know money is good. It, it gets us to uh, buy us good things, live a, a good life. We can also you know, donate and help others. There's a lot of benefits on money. But deep down in the subconscious mind, there's a different story running that keeps telling you you're not worthy, you shouldn't be charged that much for your service, who's gonna get it? And all these uh, conflicting beliefs and your subconscious mind, the power of your mind resides mostly in your subconscious mind, more than 95% of your mental power is below your awareness. Mm. It's like the script for your life you're leaving out. So it doesn't matter how on a conscious level you so want money, but deep down there is a different story. You need to discover what that story is, what you're telling yourself. And until you change that story, your money circumstances will not change. Mm. And the energy you're putting out is different. Yeah. So I think for me, and even still, I still have this problem that how do we access our subconscious to change the story? Yeah, that's the, you know, the part we all need to work on <laughs> is we need to understand how the subconscious mind works and how to access that resource so that we can start uh, changing our patterns, change our mind, change the deep-seated thoughts. And uh, so one thing you can do is through meditation. Yeah, sit in a quiet place and chill inverse away from the outside noise. So you are not using your physical senses to sense. You start to tune in your internal senses. and. Uh, all your memories from all your past, all your past experiences, feelings and emotions you have ever experienced are stored in the subconscious mind. It's like a huge wire warehouse. Everything is there. So you need to access that part. Uh, you want to do this thing uh, as consciously as you can. So um, affirmation is a good way. Affirmation is the, you know, a short phrase you can repeat over and over again because the subconscious mind works by repetition. It's just like our habit. So if you repeat it enough time with conviction, 
eventually it will deliver to your subconscious mind. So besides the you know affirmations, use meditation. It's a form of meditation that I teach is um, uh, you know kind of like a three-step meditation. First, to close your eyes, take a deep breath, uh, really, really deep until you cannot breathe anymore and hold for as long as you can and slowly let it out through your mouth and really tune in your, your breathing and turn inward. And then establish that's the step number one is relax. Step number two is to uh, communicate to your subconscious mind. Ask your subconscious mind to uh, take an order from you. So ask your subconscious mind to raise a hand for you. So that's what I teach my clients to do is to ask the subconscious mind to raise a hand. So when you raise a hand, the hand will rise automatically. So it's not like you trying to lift it up. It's going to feel effortlessly and you will maybe awed or shocked. How come the hand just lift itself? So that's how you know it's the subconscious mind lifting up the hand. So that's the second step, making sure your subconscious mind is listening. And the step number three is to ask your subconscious mind to bring visualizations to you. Because now your subconscious mind has established a connection with your conscious mind. Now it can do more. Your subconscious mind is like a five-year-old that has the mentality of a five-year-old. There's no judgment and uh, likes you to praise it. So when you say good things about it, it reinforces it. So now you can ask more. I ask it to bring you uh, visualizations, imaginations. Then you can ask, what is the money block here? Ask your mind to take you back to a time and place when you first experienced that feeling of um, there's a shortage of money or money doesn't grow on trees or whatever a life experience that you had that instilled that belief system in you. So with your current understanding, with your current consciousness, go visit that childhood you and, uh, and root to that limiting belief and start to tell that child a different story. So that's how you can reprogram your subconscious mind and remove the limiting beliefs from its source. And money beliefs, usually uh, we take on money beliefs around the age of seven um, to 10 year old. Now you can imagine a, a child at that young age. Well, as a really young child, we didn't have uh, any conception about anything. And everything we, we, that come to our mind is learned. So we learn everything. And who we learn from were the people around us at the time. So our parents, our guardians, our teachers, friends, our surroundings, our environment, they are programming our mind. We didn't have a judgment. So whatever comes to the mind first was taken as truth. It mm -hmm. enters the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is like a blank piece of paper at the time. So whatever you put in there, it enters there and it forms a barrier, forms a, a core. So for the, um, uh, the subsequent uh, idea that coming into your mind, it's going to be judged by what's already in your subconscious mind. So if the new idea comes, it's in alignment with what's already in there. Uh, it's allowed it to enter, to reinforce what's already in there. So reinforce your belief system. And if the new idea comes, it's out of alignment with what's already in there. It's going to be rejected. So it's not based on truth or force or good or bad. It's totally based on formularity. Whatever goes into your mind first, it takes hold. So that's how we build our belief system. And this is the, uh, later on, we'll find out we want to make money. But deep down, there's the belief system that thinks money is bad, or making money is hard, or rich people are greedy. All these ideas are blocking you from actually making money. So that's how the mind works. Around the age of between seven to 10, as a child, start to 
uh, being exposed to many ideas, that's when they first form concepts about money, about uh, you know how much they are worthy uh, based off how they were treated, uh, if they had child abuse, being abused as a child, um, they're gonna have a you know low self-esteem about themselves based on their past experiences. So around the age of seven to 10, when the kids start learning about the concept of money, that money can buy things, you need money to buy everything, then what the parents, the guardians taught the kids about money, that becomes their belief system. They didn't have any filtering yet. So if they wanted something beautiful, a beautiful dress, for example, and the mom would say, oh, we cannot afford it, or uh, let's get something cheaper. You know, saying all these things, the child starts to internalize that and interpret and invent, oh, I'm not worthy of the beautiful dress, or a nice, I'm not marked for nice things in life. I should always settle for less, for the cheaper things. That's how they formed the, the concept. It's not the parent's fault to do that. But the parents, they are victims of their mind as well, but they're passing it down through generations. So there's a definitely, um, you know, generational beliefs uh, in each and every one of us that when we try to start a business, try to overcome our limiting belief, try to achieve success, we really need to dig deep into ourselves. There's a lot of deep inner work because it's all about how you do things, right? How you talk to prospects, how you get on the phone call with someone who wants your service. And it all shows in your communication. Your concept about yourself shows up in everything you do. That's why it requires deep inner work for business success. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to all of that. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and this is, a, I think it's a money method is uh, one of the most uh, prevalent issues because it's so pandemic, it's like for everybody, the vast majority of people have this issue because so many people have this, this issue that is overlooked as an issue that we kind of get used to it and we've been instilled by our culture that uh -huh. saving money is good, always save for the rainy days and always conserve their scarcity. Uh, so we feel when we make money, we're taking money from other people. We feel bad about it. It's actually not the case because um, it's a win-win situation. When you right. make money as a coach, you are helping another person transform their life. So the money on the surface, the money came from your client, the deeper, deeper down, it comes from the universe. Mm -hmm. The universe directed that person to you so that you benefit each other. So there, I know there are coaches, they feel bad um, to take other people's money. And also the way how we trained about sales, there's uh, so much misconception. I was just listening to a podcast yesterday by a sales coach. He said, uh, you know, decades ago, he went to an event uh, by a sales master. And the sales master, the first thing he said on the stage is that, uh, reached out his pocket and said, uh, your, uh, your customer has the money in the pocket and that is yours. Your job is to go and get the money from their pocket. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, uh, there's so much misconceptions <laughs> about sales. You're not trying to, you know, get money from others. When you have that feeling, you're taking away money from others. And then you also have the, uh, you know, morality that tells you that is wrong. So you have the internal conflict. Then you are afraid to sell your coaching. Then you got big problem. Not yeah. only that you're going to be poor, you're going to be stuck. And also, you're not helping other people. Right. And that's why we're here, right? That's why we're all here, to help other people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You need to go out and sell your coaching. It's a beautiful thing. 
to do that. You're not taking money away from the, anyone else. Right. right. You're actually, it's, yeah. it's like the energetic swap of right. my time for money, but I'm also helping that person to make more money as well. Yes. And to, you know, help their family. And so that their kids don't hear the, mm. the things that we heard when we were young. Like, I, I don't know how many times my grandparents said to me, and not meanly, just, oh, you think money grows from trees? Or, you know, you, you always have to work hard, work hard, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with those too. And I, I still struggle sometimes with a money mindset and an abundance mindset because mm -hmm. they creep back every once in a while. I'm de definitely going to try your meditation. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try it out. Your mind yeah. will take you and help you remove the mental block. And that's the thing is the, um, our you know, older generation told us uh, you have to work hard to make ends meet. Yes. So that's our conception about money. So we work really hard and ask a little bit of money, a small amount of money, because we think uh, that's how much we are worthy. And all these compound together, you work so many hours just to get ends meet. Uh, and it's all the limiting beliefs that are stopping us from uh, uh, even asking for more. Right. Yes. Just even asking for more makes us feel guilty and shameful. Yes, so that's the energy we need to shift. Yes, I agree. Um, oh, go ahead. Say? Yeah, I, I want to mention another uh, point is that your transformation with your client starts from when the client pays. Yes. Because it's not that you're taking their money. They actually experience a lot of energy when they give they, they are, you know, overcoming their fear of parting with money. They are saying yes to themselves. They are making it happen. So that by itself is a huge transformation yes. for the client. Yes. You know, just by you asking money for your service. And they came up with the money and saying yes to their own dreams. That's a huge transformation right there. Yes. Yeah, and they're, they're committed. Them. They're yeah. committing to it as well, committing to helping themselves. Yeah, and think about the, the amount of energy they get just by paying your service, just right. by overcoming their own money limiting beliefs and say yes to themselves. So it's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. It's not just benefits you, it benefits the client. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to ask money for your service. It's a, it's a win-win situation. So you, yeah. uh, when you view it from this perspective, you will never be afraid to promote your service, to ask for money for your service, and to sell on the right. call. Yes. Sell your service. My yeah. audience has heard many times from me, the, tra the transformation is in the transaction. Yeah, I love that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It starts yes. from there. Exactly. It does. And it start. it also, and you're, you know, getting over your own fear of it starts with you getting your message out to the world. Right. Yes. So, you know, it's all this, it's all intertwined. Like everything is intertwined. Yeah. The money mindset affects everything. Yes. It, it affects um, whether or not you'll show up, how you show up. Whether or not you get clients, whether or not you put in the effort to go and get clients, mm -hmm. it's everything. So I want to ask a quick question about your meditation. Mm. So you said, you know, when you're, you're in your meditation, you get your subconscious to like raise their hand and say, I'm here. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and you ask it for visual visualizations or what your money blocks are yeah. mm. at that point when we can see what our money blocks are mm. are we con we're, i mean at this point we're mm -hmm. we're in a conscious state talking to our subconscious 
Yes, a communication. Right. So consciously, we're asking our subconscious to remove those visualizations and replace them with new ones? You don't have to change the visualization. You can re-experience that, uh, reinterpret that experience with your current understanding. Okay. So because okay. when you were a kid, you didn't have the resources you have right now. But that kid still lives within you. So you are healing the part of you that requires healing. With the part of you now, um, more at once, uh, more knowledge, more knowledgeable. Mm. Um, so use this part to heal your past. Heal the part that's got stuck in that limiting yeah. belief. So we're not like replacing files, we're no. adding to the files. You don't need to change the facts, like what happened in the past. You only need to change the interpretation mm. of that past. Yeah, and, and we add the knowledge that we consciously have to that file. Yes, mm. what you have right now, use what you have right now to heal uh, mm. your past. Perfect, that's great explanation. So I always got kind of stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got stuck there. I'm like, okay, so now what do I do with it? Like, do, do I replace it? Do I, what do I do? Well, oftentimes when you uncover that initial experience, uh, that's all you need. You don't need to do anything. Once you uncover that, it's healed. So you don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. By simply um, finding it out, you may just heal it, heal it. Hmm. So just acknowledging it consciously mm. will help heal it. Yes. Beautiful. Or you can say it's past. Like you realize, oh, that got me stuck. And then just as easy as deciding to move on. Mm. Yes. See my brain working right now? You could could you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know, we all need to have an introspection um, because uh, a lot of these things are not uh, trauma trauma, not like serious trauma that to the right. point that we have conscious memory of. They're not that significant actually. They could be something really um, simple. Maybe mm -hmm. one time you're five year old, you're riding a bike, you fell, you fell off the bike, and then you got a fear. If I get on the bike again, I'm gonna fall again. And that pattern may show up in your business. You say, Oh, I just failed the business. I'm so afraid to start a new business. Mm -hmm. So that fear um, could come from the childhood because the fear itself is, this, is, is a type of energy. Um, all your experiences, I, I actually use a metaphor, is a pearl necklace. You have a string of pearl necklace, and you have a string connecting those pearls. And that string is an emotion, for example, fear. It's an emotion. And all the, um, the, the pearls, each individual pearl represents a life experience. So different life experiences stuck together by the string it is a string make it possible for them to you know be strength strengthened so for example the fear in business when you trace it down it could be coming from a fear uh, from your early childhood maybe mm -hmm. you're just a little girl three year old and one day a bug landed on your arm or something and mm -hmm. you're super scared by that experience and that fear that feeling of fear is there it's implanted so later on when you um, you know start a business for example that fear might be triggered even though it's a totally new different experience it's not the bug anymore even when you are a grown-up the bug lends you you're not afraid but maybe starting a new business or reaching out to people create that fear and reactivate that fear that wound in you so that's how the mind works. It's organized by these emotions. 
um, that's the emotions connecting all your life experiences. I don't even know experiences is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just how, yeah. experiences. How yeah, definitely experiences. So I was just gonna say something and I just, I was saying it to myself over and over so I didn't forget what I was gonna say and now I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> that's how your mind works, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. yes, that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. If I remember, I can always put it in the comments and, yeah. and you can come back. <laughs> um, Stu, I appreciate this. It, it, this was enlightening for me. So I'm, I'm sure it will definitely be enlightening for everybody else. I didn't, my, for some reason, Facebook on my phone just is not working. So I did pop over on my, lap, on my laptop here, but I didn't see any questions. Um, but you're here in the group. So... Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yeah, um, yeah, people, whoever watched the replay can comment below and uh, I'll come back and uh, answer any questions you might have. Yeah, tell everyone how they can find you on social media. Um, I'm active uh, on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I have a, a group, actually I have two groups. One for spiritual life coaching is called Spiritual Mind Realities. So you can look it up. And for my business, I have online business and mindset mastery. So that's yeah. what it's called. Okay. Uh, so look it up and love to um, have you in there and we'll learn from each other. And you can yeah, each other. Definitely. And you can tag them in the comments too as well if you want. Oh, okay. Sounds good. And um, so everyone can go visit you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, Sue. I appreciate your time today and your knowledge was wonderful. I'm sure everyone will get a lot of value out of this conversation. I know I did. You're so All welcome. Right. All right. Well, My pleasure. All right. We'll see you in the group then. Bye. Bye, Sue.